Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church this morning. If you have a t- time this morning, please take the time to, to fill out the friendship card in, in, the, in the chairs ahead of you. At the time of the offering, you go ahead and put it in the offering plate at that point. Our focus for today is focused living, proper, valuable, heavenly treasure. We rejoice in the, in the faith that God gives us. We rejoice in the faith that, that the Holy Spirit works in our hearts through the power of his word of God. To always keep our minds focused on that heavenly treasure that the Lord gives us, that Jesus won for us on the, on the cross. Um, this morning, we're going to begin with an opening hymn, hymn 757. It's a newer hymn, so our soloists will sing the first refrain and the first verse. The congregation is invited to join in the second refrain and the next three verses. Let's worship the Lord. treasure is there your heart shall be all that you possess will never set you free seek the things that last come and learn from me where your treasure is your heart shall be What do you gain from all your worry? What should you eat or what to wear? There is no peace in stress or hurry. So much more will dwell in God's care. Where your treasure is, there your heart shall be all that you possess will never set you free seek the things at last come and learn from me where your treasure is your heart shall be look at the ravens high above you They do not work their whole life through. And yet God feeds them and protects them. So how much more will God protect and care for you? Well, your your treasure is there, your heart shall be. All that you possess will never set you free. Seek the things that last, come and learn from me. Where your treasure is, your heart shall be. Behold the lilies in their splendor. In grace and beauty they are dressed. And yet so soon their bloom is faded. So how much more will those who look to God be blessed? Where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. All that you possess will never set you free. Seek the things at last. Come and learn from me Where your treasure is, your heart shall be O little flock, do not be frightened Yours is the kingdom of the Lord Give your possessions to the needy Obtain a treasure in God's heaven safely stored. Where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. All that you possess will never set you free. Seek the things that last. Come and learn from me. 
where your treasure is, your heart shall be. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I was born in sin and that I still struggle against my sinful nature. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we are dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ who is called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace then, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and willing to give far more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
Our first lesson this morning, taken from Genesis chapter 15, also serves as our sermon text. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. This is the word of our God. We sing the psalm of the day, Psalm 121. We'll sing this in unison this morning. Second lesson from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with them of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children 
because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things they promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. This is the word of God. We continue by singing the verse of the day. stand for the gospel lesson. The gospel according to Luke chapter 12. Glory, Glory be, be to you, you O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than the birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he, will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom and all these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. This time we invite the children to come forward for a children's message. Good morning. So great to see all you up, up, up here this morning. Ever seen a picture like this before around town on a telephone pole? Ever seen something like that? How does it make you feel? Anybody have dogs or a cat? Make you feel sad if your dog was maybe missing? If your dog was lost? All right, maybe. Oh, that happens sometimes, doesn't it? That can be kind of scary, can't it, right? But it also says that there's a reward. So you're, not only are you sad for this family, but you're also thinking, wow, there's a reward. Maybe if I go and find this dog, I can get some kind of a cool reward. I saw this other one, too. This other dog was missing. $5,000 reward. Whoa. Maybe you see that, you feel sad, but you also think, you know what? I'm going to go help out. I'm going to go take my bike with my friends and go try to find this dog somehow. Then you get a $5,000 reward. How cool would that be, huh? Well, another, another lesson for you. We were lost. All of us were lost. 
And Jesus found every single one of you. And you know what Jesus did for you? He paid your reward. He paid your reward by dying on the cross for all your sins, by shedding his blood so that all your sins are completely forgiven. And now he gives you something so amazing. By faith, he gives you what Abraham had, the same exact thing Abraham had. By faith, he gives you this very great reward. It's not 5,000 bucks. It's something so much better, a treasure in heaven, something the world can never, ever take from you, something the devil can never steal from you. You have that now and for the rest of eternity. Let's praise God for that. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you so much for sending Jesus to die for all of our sins. Help us to always hold on that very great reward that you won for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. We'll continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 416, How Firm a Foundation. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text is the first lesson from Genesis chapter 15. If you'd like to keep that open, I'm kind of referring to it throughout the sermon here this morning. It was the war of the century. Four kings and their armies against five kings and their armies. And the five kings were completely routed along with their armies. As they retreated, some men fell into tar pits, others were cut down by the sword, and the rest of the people that were still living, well, they were taken as prisoners. Abram's nephew, Lot, was also taken as a prisoner of war. So Abram steps into action, takes 318, 318 trained fighting men, and goes and takes down this kings and all these armies. 
while they're sleeping, he goes and he completely destroys them and brings back Lot and the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't do it because he had confidence in his abilities as a warrior. He didn't do it because he had the best equipment out there. He didn't do it because he had the best trained forces of all time. No, he did it as God reminds us today. Because he knew the Lord was his shield and the Lord was his strength. Wasn't always that way for Abram. He wasn't always confident. He didn't always live with this no fear attitude. And God knows that. So God says this in, in uh, verse 1. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. God sees what Abram needs and he addresses that. He sees how Abram's this valiant warrior. He sees how Abram is fighting, fighting for his glory. He sees all the blessings God has given to him throughout his life, blessed more than anyone else around him. And yet, in his heart, God sees something. A heart full of fear. So he gives him exactly what he needs. Abram, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I am your shield. I am the one who's been with you your entire journey as you left Haran. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. I was the one who, who was with you as you wiped out those armies and those kings. Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. From all the enemies that encircle you, don't be afraid. I am with you every single step of the way. And I've also given you a very great reward. Not just money and cattle and, and, all, and making his house enorm enormously wealthy, right? The greatest reward that God gave to Abram was himself. God brought Abram into his family, made him his dear child, gave him the wonderful gift of eternal life, the wonderful gift of heaven that he looked forward to. Abraham, don't be afraid. I am your shield. I am your very great reward. Trust me. Believe me. And then God gives Abram the opportunity to tell him what he's so scared about. Abraham wasn't really nervous that the kings would retaliate against him. He wasn't worried about providing food for his family or anything like that. What he was concerned was, was the fact that he didn't have a child yet. What he was concerned was the fact that God hasn't kept his promise to give him a son yet. And now he's so far past the age of childbearing. Abram and Sarah at this time are way past the age of, of having kids. Humanly impossible for them to have a kid. So then Abram starts thinking, if God can't keep his promise to me to, to give me a son... Why would he keep his promise to me to send a savior for, for the world? If God can't keep a promise to me to give me a son, why would he keep all of his other promises to me as well? So Abraham became fearful, started to doubt, started to doubt God's promises, started to doubt God's love, started to doubt his own salvation. Doubt was just running through his mind, running through his heart. So the Lord says, don't be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. Trust me. Trust my promises. I will always keep them. It's easy for us to know what Abraham feels, isn't it? The word of the same very word of the Lord is before us today. It was humanly impossible for Abram and Sarah to have children. Humanly impossible. How many times don't we look at a section of God's word and think that is absolutely impossible? There's no way that can happen. The writer of the Hebrews mentioned one in our second lesson, didn't he? By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. Humanly impossible, right? But by faith, we understand that this all-powerful God creates the world in six days by his powerful word. Makes no sense to my, to my mind or my reason, right? Later, we're going to have the Lord's Supper, where God promises that through, that through bread and wine, he also gives us his true body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Impossible for my mind to understand that, right? This afternoon, there'll be a baptism, a private baptism, where through water and the word, God gives us this amazing assurance that through this water and the word and baptism, faith is created. It makes no sense to my mind and my reason. And the world around us is falling apart at different times, right? And God promises you that all things work out for your good. It's hard to believe that at times, isn't it? We start to doubt. And like Abraham, maybe we have some fear that rushes through, through, our, through our hearts, and we start to think that maybe God doesn't keep his promises to me. Maybe God doesn't love me. Maybe God isn't all-powerful. Maybe God isn't my shield. And we look for protection, not behind the all-powerful shield, but instead we look for protection against all, uh, behind all other sorts of shields that always fail. 
run back to his word. Run back to the word of the Lord. And through that word of the Lord, what does God do for us? He promises to strengthen your faith. He promises to guard you from all the evil attacks of the devil around you. He promises to keep you safe and hold you gently in the palm of his hand. As everything around you seems to be falling apart, he promises to hold you gently in the palm of his hand and promises you a very great reward. Not that you have earned, not that I deserve, deserve, but what Jesus has earned for you, the gift of eternal life in heaven. Hold on to that. That soothes my conscience, that, that, that chases all the fears out of our hearts. And then God reiterates the promise to him in verse 4 and 5. He says this, Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up to the heavens, count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Don't be afraid, Abram, I always keep my promises. Don't be afraid, nothing is impossible for me. I'm going to keep my promise. Your servant Eliezer will not be, a, be your heir. Even though you're well past the age of having kids, you're going to have one. <laughs> I'm going to give you a child. Through your own flesh and blood, you're going to have a son. Go ahead, look up at the stars, Abraham. See if you can count them. I dare you. See how many stars are up there. That's how great your family is going to be. But the most important thing to remember, Abraham, is that through that, through your offspring, the promised Messiah will come. The one who will crush the devil's head. I always keep my promises, Abraham, so don't be afraid. Abram believed him. Look at verse 6. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. And doubt and fear run out of his heart. Doubt and fear run for the doors. It says Abram believed him. It's the first time that the word believed is used in the Bible, actually. It's, uh, the English connotation for us is amen. It's going to happen. And the word picture is that of a child that is, feels safe in the arms of a father or mother. Knows that, that, that this mother and believes that this mother or father is not going to drop him, keep him, keep him safe. So in the same way, the Lord reaches down with the word of the Lord to Abram and says, I have you. You are safe. And Abram believed that he was protected in the arms of the Lord. The Holy Spirit worked that faith in his heart. And through that wonderful gift of faith, he gives him the righteousness that the promised Messiah would bring to him one day. Through faith, Abram believed that, this, that he would have a son and one of his grandchildren would be the promised Messiah who would die for the sins of the entire world. And we have the same exact faith as Abraham, don't we? We can see it a little bit clearer, like Hebrews says in our lesson, right? Abraham looked forward to the Messiah who would come. And we get to look back at his word and see exactly what he has done for us. And in the word, as you see that, you can open up the scriptures and see how Jesus was born, how he lived a perfect life for you in your place, how he went to a cross and died for the sins of the entire world, and by his death on the cross has washed you clean of all of them, covered you with his righteousness, and given you that free gift, that very great reward, a home in heaven. Not because we've earned or deserved it, but the Holy Spirit has given that to us through the power of his word. Doubts can run in our mind at all certain different times of our life. Miracles happen all the time, though, don't they? Later today, in our own church, a miracle is going to happen. Mabel is going to be baptized right over there in that baptismal font. And through water, the word, and baptism, God promises her that she's going to have the forgiveness of sins, new life, and salvation. You all have the same promise. As baptized children of God, you have the forgiveness for all of your sins. You have new life. You have a very great reward waiting for you in heaven. And not just that, as a baptized child of God, you have the Lord who is always your shield, who is always protecting you, always holding you, always comforting you. Through baptism, you have this wonderful gift of a very great reward. Hold on to that. See how the Lord blesses you through that as you go back to his, as you go back to his word. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, then he encourages us to chase those fears out of our hearts, right? By the power of his word, he chases them out of our hearts. So we hold on not to our own strength, but to him and his word. Run to his word. Hold on to his promises. He keeps every single one of them for us. We have a victorious, living, resurrected Savior who holds you safe in the palm of your hand and gives you this wonderful reward. Hold on to it all the days of your life. Amen.
Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue with the offering. At this time, please take the time to fill out the friendship card and go ahead and stick it in the offering plate as well. We'll continue on page 11 with the Nicene Creed. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We'll continue with the prayer of the church. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for reconciling us to yourself through the sufferings and death of your dear Son. Through him we have confidence to enter into your presence and to bring you our prayers and petitions. Out of the infinite bounty of your goodness, grant us a rich measure of your spirit. Let the love of Christ fill your church so that it may flourish in all good works. Help us show love and compassion for all who are in need. Bestow on the nations of the earth the knowledge of your mercy that they may turn to you, the only God, and find salvation in you. Strengthen our faith so that we unfa unfailingly come to you in prayer for all of our bodily needs. Give a special measure of your power to those who are sorrowful or mourning, to those who are, who are in pain or sickness, to those who may be in temptation or peril, that they may receive your blessed aid. Help us patiently endure any chastening and afflictions you permit to come into our lives, knowing that you are using them in love to prepare us for that joyful communion with you, which is ours for all eternity. Accept our prayers and intercessions and provide for all our needs, not because we are worthy, but for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
We'll continue on page 12 with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and at all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be his own, so we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join the glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. And we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. We join the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. Remember to me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Congregation may be seated. 
At this time, those members of the congregation who have prepared their hearts and minds, please come forward for all things are ready.
We'll continue on page 16 with the Song of Simeon. Please stand. Let's pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. You may be seated for the closing hymn, hymn 451. <laughs> 